Hi everyone, my name is Brian Mulligan from Education Futures and I just want to do a quick recording of this presentation I gave to a Digital Transformation Masterclass for the NTutor project on the 21st of February 2024. It's really about encouraging institutions to be more strategic in the use of learning technologies. Now I've called the presentation fine words, but are no parsnips, because when it comes to institutional strategies, I suspect that we talk a little bit of motherhood and apple pie, things that no one can disagree with. We use all these fine words, and you can see the types of words that are listed there, uh, but do we really mean them? Are we really doing the things that are needed to achieve these things at significant scale? Because we do bottom-up initiatives. Uh, enthusiastic lecturers get involved in research projects or transformation projects, um, capacity. We put in infrastructure, uh, we do training. But are we usually dealing with the usual suspects and we're not really taking the actions needed to widen this out to a much larger number of staff? When you talk about strategy, there's a few points I'd like to make. This is about flourishing as an organization or in difficult times, I suppose it's about surviving. We tend to take a longer term horizon. We want to look at the future, predict what's going to happen. So to some extent, it's about big ideas and doing things at scale. And that requires big decisions. Unfortunately, it's not just what to do, it's what not to do as well, because we can't do everything. So we have to be selective. So we have to pick the right ideas. And then we have to put significant resources or effort into those ideas. So we need a push from the top, not just support from the top. It needs to be pushed from the top. And the people at the top of the organization need to make these big decisions. I've always been taken by the this quote from Peter Drucker that doing the right thing is more important than doing things right. If we, if we are doing something to, to a level of excellence and it's the wrong thing, it's a waste of time. If we're doing the right thing, it doesn't have to be to a level of excellence. It just has to be good enough. So it's worth asking what students want. You know, do they want badges and prizes? I suspect a lot of things we, we're doing for them they don't want. But when we ask them what they really want, they say things like recordings, because they know we can do it. They saw them during COVID, and surveys since then have showed that they want that to continue on. But they also want flexible access, and recordings contribute to flexible access, because if they miss a day or that they have other responsibilities, it will reduce their stress. There are other things that can give them flexible access as well. They want transparency in the grading of their assignments. They want to be clear where they're getting their grades and where not. And of course, they want to get good feedback and timely feedback on, on their work. Uh, they want skills in their courses that will help them get employment. They want to reduce the cost of going to college. And they also don't want us to waste their time. They're short of a time. Now, I've added accommodation there. It's not one that I would put in the domain of learning technologies, but obviously that's something they want as well. We'll say that's a challenge and learning technology can contribute to that challenge. So if we look at it from the point of view of the institution, the institution might have specific strategic objectives. These are just examples of ones to improve the quality of learning on campus, maybe to have other offerings for 18 year olds other than just the standard campus based degree to increase the number of students on the campus, to increase enrollment, and sometimes there's a capacity issue that needs to be addressed, uh, to increase access to campus programs by people who would find difficulty coming to campus. Uh, lifelong learning is an, is an absolute huge area. Um, uh, maybe an institution might strategically decide to get more heavily involved in lifelong learning. We could look to new markets, like distance learning or even international markets. We bring international students to us, but we can also go to them using learning technology. Our new products, is the degree the only game in town, as it were? Are there other alternative credentials that we can um, provide to learners? 
I'd like to say a few words on digital transformation, just to make this distinction between digitization and digital transformation. Traditionally, we have classes, practical assignments, exams. Those are the type of things we have in a traditional classroom. We can digitize these to make them better or to make them reduce our workload with Zoom classes or recordings using simulations instead of real hardware. Uh, allowing electronic submission of assignments and providing the grades through that, our online quizzes and exams even. But really, we're really using the same models we had before and we're just adding, we're making them slightly better by digitizing or slightly easier to do. Digital transformation really is about new ways of doing things, new products, new ways of delivering those products. So I would say the digital transformation in teaching is about new models of learning. Now these new models, actually they're not all new, but some of them are new and are enabled by the technology that's emerging. And some of the older ones are even made even better by the use of technology. So we need to make that distinction. So what are these new models? Some of these are sort of trivial and some of them are much more significant, we'll say. And they're not all independent. There are synergies between the models, but I'm going to just go quickly go down through them. So self-directed learning with robust assessment for credit. OK, why not provide materials to a student, let them study them in their own time, in their own way, and when they're ready, submit for assessment. Competency based education, a bit like self directed, or it can include self directed, but the idea is that we don't give them grades as such. We determine that they're competent, able to do something, and then allow them to progress. And often they submit when they're ready to submit. Formative assessment for learning. What if we were to, as a strategy for an institution, to say, what we're going to do is really put our formative assessment on steroids? give really high quality, fast assessment to students. How would that change the learning process for the whole organization, the quality of it? Flipped learning, why deliver content in the classroom? Students can access content themselves before class. They can even access it in a way where they can self-test or the lecturer can be aware that they're accessing that content. And when they come to class, they're ready to apply that learning or to discuss that learning. Project-based learning, which I consider really just to be flipped learning on steroids. What if students came to campus and spent all day working on projects on their own with teams? Think of how much they'd learn. Now they do need to learn content as well, but that can all be consumed online and it can be monitored and they can hit deadlines for that. Online distance learning almost seems trivial now. Uh, we've had online distance learning probably for about nearly 30 years since since the 90s. But as I say, distance learning or lifelong learning could be a strategy uh, for an institution. Online distance learning is just a new form of that. Hybrid high flex may be a bit more sophisticated, a bit more interesting insofar as imagine if specific programs on your campus were available on the campus and to students off campus essentially simultaneously. This can be done with expensive equipment, but there are cheaper ways to do this as well. And I would say that every master's degree by coursework in an institution should be available in a high flex model. Workplace based learning. And this, to some extent, is, well, I could ask the question, should young people just have to go to college when they're 18? Is that the only option available to them? Now, we know they have apprenticeships as well, but if we were to model our degrees on those apprenticeships, in other words, recruit young people, put them in workplaces, give them credit for what they're learning in the workplace, and then they would take their more theoretical, their more formal modules online. Would that be a solution to a lot of the problems young people have we're going to college. Stacked micro credentials. Could we chunk our degrees into smaller amounts? Now, this is probably mostly useful for lifelong learners, and those smaller 
credits would stack up to major awards like a degree. That's not to say it's only for lifelong learners. These could micro credentials could be embedded in campus based programs as well, particularly micro credentials that can be got cheaply from elsewhere, even from uh, major companies like Microsoft um, or Cisco. At scale higher education, if we were to create courses online, they would have to be online that could be delivered to hundreds, if not thousands of people to bring down the unit cost of education. This is emerging quite significantly in the US at the moment, although not just in the US. I know of one in the UK as well. Of course, there are barriers to all these, mo uh, all these models are barriers to us creating these models in our institutions. And I'm not going to really talk about them, but I would say that the barriers are mostly people based. Um, there's no pedagogical or technological barriers to those models. Um, I will say a few words on, I won't talk about them in depth, but I'll say a few words about quality assurance processes and policies, because I feel that's what we need to do next. We need to modify our policies to make us an ag agile organizations that can develop our, develop new models. So we need to get suitable policies and regulations so that we can test many ideas. And the way we need to go about that is building simple versions of those ideas, the minimum viable product, and getting them out to students quickly. They may not be up to this, quite up to the standard that we think they can, that can be achieved, but with continuous improvement processes, we can do that quickly. But we also get an early idea if these will work. And we, then we can prioritize between the ideas that we're testing and scale up the scale up the successes. So this is one way for us to find out what are the right things to do. So thanks very much. I hope you found that useful.